Well, again, I'm Andy Bonner, one of the pastors here at the Valley, and I hope you'll join us for this series. On some of your chairs are this little card. It tells you about the four messages that will be a part of that. And uh, as we move into the new year, some of you are going to be hitting the gym physically. This is about hitting the gym spiritually and how it can change your life, and you can become the best version of who God created you to be. That's what this is all about. And it's going to take some habits in your life, and that's what we're going to be talking about in the midst of that. Well, as you come to Christmas Eve, one of the exciting things about Christmas Eve is that maybe you got all your gift uh, buying done. Hopefully, so most of that's done by now. But um, a few of you every year come to Christmas Eve, and you still got a few left to get. I don't know how you're going to pull it off. So I, I, I did a little research for you. I went to hashtags, worst gifts ever. The reason I did that is because the good ones got to be gone by now. There can't be any good ones left. And so here's what came up. Here's one. You take a picture of yourself, put it, now I don't think you're going to make that by Christmas morning, but maybe you can take a picture of the picture and that whole thing and, uh, and maybe give that. Here's another one. Guys, maybe you're going to be sporting a new look, and this will just kind of ease it in, and uh, you can share this calendar with that special person just to let them know where things are moving. Well, <laughs> those are gifts you probably aren't going to give, but here's one I hope that all of us will give. Every year during the Christmas season, we do something fun. Are you ready for that? We all come together and we crowdfund some needs in our local communities. And, and because we crowdfund it, because we all come together, man, we can do big stuff. This year, we want to crowdfund two local partners, the Mercy Mission House in Shelby County and the Community Food Truck in Miami County. Those are two partners that are just meeting needs in these local areas. And here's the deal. We all come together and we've kind of we've kind of done this for the last couple years. It's been kind of fun. We figure everybody's going to give a gift for $29.95 somewhere. What if we all gave $29.95 or just something? If we all participated, some of you have been so blessed you can add a zero to that or a couple zeros, whatever God directs you to do. Together we want to make a huge impact in some families' lives. Because here at the Valley We don't want to just talk about the things Jesus said to do. We want to actually do them. And love does as part of that. So if you want to be a part of that tonight, you can go back to the joy boxes in the back. You can go to the website or download the app, and there's a give button there. And I want to say this, 100% of what comes in tonight is going to go to those community partners. All of us together, both Piqua, the Troy campus, those who are online, those who are in the room with us, like we're all going to work together and make a huge difference impact in this area. So excited to get to see that every year what God is doing. Well, don't you love lights at Christmas? We see all the lights around us and our lights and Christmas just go, they go together. I remember when I was a kid, we used to go to this place called Ludlow Falls. It's not that far from here. And, and it was like really dark and you couldn't really see. It was almost, it felt like a canyon to me and there was a waterfall in there. And then they would They would put the lights on all at once. You couldn't see anything, and all of a sudden, everything just illuminated, and it was just so amazing as a kid to see all these lights come on, and all of a sudden, it just changed changed the landscape of everything you could see. I remember when I was a when I was even younger as a kid, we used to go to this crib lighting at, the, at our, our church where I, where I grew up, and they had it on the, on the church lawn, and it was all dark. You couldn't see anything. It was formless, all that. And then on a certain count, they would light it all up, and all of a sudden, you got to see the manger scene, and it was just beautiful. And then we'd sing Christmas carols. We'd go to the community center and get some hot chocolate and donuts. And I remember our parents would always drive us around town and look at the Christmas lights. Well, I grew up in Rushi, so, you know, there might be 10 houses with lights. You know, it was a very short tour, and none of them were like that house on 66. I guarantee it wasn't like that. But what, what really has always struck me is how light has the ability to transform things. Light has the ability to change how we view things. One of my favorite illustrations of that is a painting that somebody once did. Uh, There was actually a set of two paintings, and they took this painting, and they painted this forest scene. And and if you'll notice, if you look hard enough in the back of the painting, you'll notice a kind of a, there's a cottage back there. And, And you can only faintly see it through the trees. It's dark. But there's, you, you, you kind of get this sense of cold and hopeless and, and just a darkness to the whole thing. But then the, the, the artist does something just amazing with this. They take the second 
canvas, and, and they really paint it just like the first one, except he takes one stroke of color, and he adds it through the window of that cottage, and it brings it out into the path. And with that light, he transforms. They transform the scene totally. That is what Christmas is all about. See, Jesus came into our world, into this darkness, into the hopelessness and the helplessness that we experience in this life, the oppression that sometimes we experience, the, the wonder of will it ever be okay? And will everything come together? And will the chaos around me get me? <laughs> and into the midst of all that, Jesus comes 2,000 years ago to be with us. The, the people of Israel, 700 years before Jesus came, were struggling. And, and they, were, they were hoping that someone, that God himself would come and save them because they were experiencing darkness. In fact, we read this in Isaiah chapter 9, about 700 years before that first Christmas, the prophet Isaiah is prophesying and foretelling that Jesus is coming, that a rescuer is coming into the darkness of this world, and, and the prophet describes this place, this world that they live in, as a people living in darkness. You see, the Assyrians were an enemy at that time, and they were raiding and hurting. They were oppressing the people of God, and the people of God had committed sin. They'd allowed darkness into their life, and there was shame, and there was guilt. And the people in Isaiah's day were desperate for a Savior. They were desperate for someone to come and save them from their sins. But you know, it wasn't just the people 700 years before Jesus came into this world that felt that way. The people in the day when Jesus came, that first Christmas, felt the same way. You see, the, the Jews in those days were being oppressed by the Roman government, and they had experienced sin in their own life, and they had heard that there was a Messiah coming. They would read these prophecies. They knew that a Savior was to come, but for 400 years there had been no prophet had spoke about this Savior. And, and you know how we get when we don't hear the word when we don't hear for a while something's happened, we begin to doubt, and the people of God are beginning to doubt that is, is God really going to come through? Is his promise still good? Does he still love us? Does he even care? And in the moments when we doubt, when we're living in the shame and the guilt of what we've done, when there's chaos and darkness around us, and I think we probably not only saw that 700 years before Jesus came and the time when Jesus came, but also now in this world, we experience the darkness of chaos and destruction and problems beyond our ability to deal with them on our own. And when you're feeling all those things, the Bible calls that darkness. See, all of us are a hurting, desperate people, and we have needs, we have hopes, we want to feel good about ourselves. They want to feel good about themselves, and so the people of God are waiting for someone that can come and put that splash of light into their life. That's where all of us are today. We all need that moment because the Bible says whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. You see, without the Savior coming into our life, without that splash of light, we're living in the dark, and we don't know what tomorrow brings. We just live in the hopelessness and the helplessness and in the place of confusion where we were at, and we need somebody to come into our lives and, and to change us, to rescue us from where we're at, even though we don't deserve it. And Isaiah says that, as we, that in, in, in chapter 9 that Jesus was God's answer for that darkness that God had an answer all along for the darkness that people feel, and that was Jesus. In fact, he goes on to say, and Matthew actually in his Christmas story shares what Isaiah had wrote. He said, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. And that's what Christmas is all about. 
the coming of Jesus into this world to rescue, to rescue us from the darkness of our lives. I heard a story about a, a family. They were actually, they were vacationing at a, a lake house. And there was a dock there, and the, the two boys were playing on the dock, and their dad was with them, but the dad had to go into the boathouse. And so the 12-year-old son and the 3-year-old son were out playing on the dock. And when the dad went into the boathouse, the little 3-year-old guy named Billy decided he was going to go explore the end of the dock, and he decided to try to step into that shiny aluminum boat that was sitting there, and he misjudged it, and he plopped into the water. The 12-year-old had been distracted, and so now the little guy's in the water, and he, he yells for, for his dad, and his dad comes running out of the boathouse, and the little guy's just, the 12-year-old's just pointing to the water where he went. And so the dad dove in, and he went to the bottom of this lake. It was only six or seven feet. It, well, it's not like it was a long way down, and he gets down, and he's reaching for little Billy. He's trying to find him. He's panicked, as you would be, and, and he reaches. It's muddy, and it's murky, and he can't see anything. There's just clouds of of black and he panics he's not sure what to do and on his way back up he brushes against one of the poles that's holding up the dock and he, he feels little Billy's leg and Billy he's got his hands wrapped around the log of that the post of that dock it's just this death grip and so his dad peels his fingers back and he brings him to the surface and they both burst out and, and it takes a while because they're gasping for air and so he brings him back onto the dock and after they calm down as they finally come to a place where they can breathe again, the dad asked little Billy, he said, what were you doing under the water, it, hanging on to that post? And little Billy looked at him and said, Dad, I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you to come. You and I are that little guy. We're clinging to some of the things in this life, and we're just hoping, we're just hoping that somebody's coming. Well, I want you to know today, his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. And he came from the beautiful, light, perfect heaven. And he came into this murky world. He came into this place that's dark and sometimes turbulent and chaotic. And he came here to save you and me. He began the greatest rescue mission ever. See, Jesus came. He came as an infant. He was born as, as an infant, but then he grew into a man and he forgave and he healed and he restored and he, he taught. And then he went to the cross and he died on that cross. And when he died on that cross, he, he suffered and endured the physical pain of that, but far worse was the spiritual pain of him being separated from his father when his father turned his back on him. And he, he endured the darkness of being separated from God. He did that for you and me. He took our place, and he endured the darkness that we should experience for eternity and in this place. And his name is Jesus, and that says it all. The name Jesus means deliverer. It means rescuer. And that's why God sent Jesus, the Son of God, to come into our lives to save us because we needed a rescuer. See, Jesus isn't a religion. He's not a set of rules or a great idea. No, he's a person. He's the Son of God. He is God himself who has come to be with us in the person of Jesus so that we can experience him, that we can have the light come into our life. And Jesus puts it this way. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Today, I want you to picture yourself as one of those two paintings. You're either the one that's all dark by yourself, trying to figure it out on your own, or you're the painting with the light that comes out of the window, out of your heart, into the world. He came to do that. And when the light of the world comes into your life, it will change everything. It'll change the whole scene. And yes, there'll still be chaos around you. There'll still be problems in your life. There'll still be difficulties. There'll be consequences for your sin. And yet, the shame and the guilt will be released and you'll be made new. And nothing around you can harm you because here's the thing, the darkness can't overcome the light. The darkness cannot overcome the light. And so the challenge for all of us is will we let Jesus come into the rooms of our heart 
and shine out of us? Will we allow him to change who we are because that's why he came? And he didn't come just to release us and to forgive us, but he came to be with us. That's one of his names, Emmanuel, God with us. He came to do life with us. Will you let him do that? In 1994, there was a, a, a couple of Americans that went to Russia to teach. They had invited these Americans in because Russia was been disintegrating as a, as a bigger group, and so they, they invited them to come in to teach morals and ethics and those kind of things because in that communist country, they hadn't been exposed to those things. They, didn't, they had never, never been brought up with those things. And so these two Americans go in and they're, they're invited to teach in the institutions and in the fire departments and in the schools. And yes, they were also brought into to an orphanage. And, and they were told they could share their faith. And so they went into this orphanage and, and, and they were teaching. There were about 100 boys and girls. And they began to teach these boys and girls the Christmas story. They'd never heard the Christmas story. And they shared how Mary and Joseph had gone to Bethlehem to, because of the census to to, to, for the baby to be born and while, or, or to do the census. And while they were there, it was time for the baby to be born. And so there was no room in the inn. And so the baby had to be born in a manger. And they're telling this whole story. And, and they share how shepherds had, had come and others had come and given gifts. And after they had told the whole story, the, the students, I guess, were just listening with rapt attention. The, 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 the administrators and the, and the people were just glued and at the end, these two Americans gave the, the pieces of paper to those children to draw pictures of what they had heard, what, what, to solidify this teaching. And so the, the kids began to draw, and they began to go around. And they said they began to walk around, and they stopped when they came to little Misha. Little Misha had drawn, diff- had drawn something totally different than everybody else. He had drawn two people in the manger. There was somebody in the manger with Jesus. And so through a translator, they asked little Misha, what's, what's this about? And so tell us the story. And so he tells the Christmas story, and he's got it almost perfect. And then he begins to ad-lib when he, <laughs> when he comes to the part about the two in the crib, in the manger. He said, when Mary had the baby and put Jesus in the manger, Jesus looked up at me and said, do you have some place to stay? And little Misha said, I have no mom and no papa, so I, I have no place to stay. And Jesus said, you can stay with me. And little Misha said, but I have no gift to give you. I have, I have no gift like everyone else. And, and he said, wait, what if I came in with you and I, gave, I, I warmed you up? Would that be a good gift? And, and Jesus said, yeah, that would be, one of the, that would be the greatest gift I've gotten. And so little Misha said, so I got into the crib and I kept Jesus warm. And little Misha said, Jesus said that he would never leave me, that I could always be with him. And I I think about that story, this orphan who had experienced great loss, had always experienced being alone, not having those people in his life and sensing they were adrift in this world. And and I begin to think that all of us are Misha's, that all of us need somebody who can heal us, who can rescue us, who will think the best of us no matter what we've done, where we've gone, or what we've become. You and I are little Misha. We need somebody to come and rescue us. And the great news is that Jesus has promised to be our rescuer, the light of the world. And he wants to not only forgive you and restore you and redeem you, but he wants to be inside of you. He wants to live with you. He wants to walk through this journey so that you'll never be alone. That's the promise of who Jesus is. And I love what he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. He says, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. This is the gospel writer, John. He was in the world, and though the world was made 
through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he, became the, he gave the right to become children of God. This night, 2,000 years ago, he was coming into the world to be born on that Christmas morning, to be God with us. And the question I have for you tonight is, have you let him come in and be the light of your life? Have you let him change who you are? Have you let him rescue you? Are you doing life with him? Because I want you to know that in this world you will have trouble, but he has overcome the trouble. And I challenge you tonight to not go through another year, to not go through another day without having the light of the world inside of you that can change everything about you inside and that dispels the darkness and that the darkness can't overcome. It's the only answer in your life. You know, every year we light candles. I'm going to ask you to keep your candle off for just a moment. And we, we go to the Christ candle. That's the candle that symbolized that Jesus has come into this world to be with us. Imagine that. The God of the universe has come to be with us. And when we experience Jesus, when we allow him into our life, it's like that light that flows through the cottage window. And now we have the light in us. And we experience all that God is and all that God wants for us. And we experience the forgiveness and the restoration and the hopelessness and the helplessness can go away. And even though there's chaos all around us, the darkness in this world cannot overcome the light. But you know, God doesn't just call us to keep the light ourselves. He calls us to pass the light. And so in just a moment, we're going to take this light and I'm going to pass it to you. And only when I pass it to you would put your candle on then. Because that's how it works in this world. See, God has called you not to just keep what he's given you, but he's called you to share it with the world. In the Old Testament, there was this story, a true story about Gideon and the army of God. And God whittled the army of God down to 300, and they had glass containers with torches in and trumpets. And there was this huge Midian art army, overwhelming, overpowering against them. Maybe he feels like that in your life today. And at the command, they broke their jars and they lit their candles and the light of those 300 torches defeated the Midianite army and dispelled the darkness in the world. C- can you imagine there are over 300 in this room and online tonight? Can you imagine if we took the, the light of Jesus that he gives us, if we, are, if we become the adopted children of God, can you imagine if we take that light and we spread it with the world? You can do a lot of things in this life, a lot of good things, but the greatest is sharing who Jesus is because only he can change lives. Only he can restore. Only he can rescue. Only he can come into someone's life and make them not feel alone and desperate and hopeless because that's why Jesus came to save you. And so we're going to sing this song and I'm going to go ahead and pass the light. So would you stand wherever you're at? You can take the light down and we're going to begin to pass this light. And as the light is passed, would you go ahead and turn your light on?
those lights up. you're not alone tonight if you're if you're trusted in Jesus if you've asked him to come into your life and you have the light of of Jesus in you and I want you to, to look around and realize the impact you and I can make in the world if we'll just share who Jesus is so break a glass jar get out your torch and go share Jesus with the world God bless you Merry Christmas <laughs>